folks welcome back today I want to continue by looking at another paper from the very recently concluded Uppsala conference and this paper looks at a very interesting new language this is a language tailored specifically for the domain of bioinformatics the really cool thing about this paper is that it shows how if you design a language very specifically tailored for a domain you can get gains both in terms of expressiveness and readability of your code as well as get blazing fast performance out of it the main task they're looking at solving is genomic tasks this involves things like gene sequencing and processing large amounts of genetic data. The problem is that the amount of this genetic data to be processed keeps increasing exponentially year after year. And this makes all these processing pipelines pretty slow. Biologists just keep falling back on buying faster and faster and more expensive hardware. The basic problem is that they're using general purpose programming languages like Python, which is very popular in bioinformatics, or C++. But the people doing this research are biologists. They're not programmers. They're not experts in tuning the performance of these pipelines. The authors in this paper are proposing a new language called Seek. And Seek is a subset of Python. They chose to make it a subset of Python because Python is the dominant programming language used in bioinformatics right now. So that makes adoption easier. However, it has a couple of key differences from Python. The first is that they choose to sacrifice some of the more dynamic features of Python so that they can statically type the entire program at compile time. And the second major difference is that they allow for types and language constructs specific to gene sequencing. So what are these computational tasks specific to bioinformatics and gene sequencing that we are trying to express and optimize? The first thing to know is that we're operating over sequences or gene sequences and these are strings over the four bases that make up DNA, A, C, G, and T. A very common task is that of sequence alignment, where you get what is called a read of a gene sequence, and you try to align that with a standard known gene sequence. And the way you do that is by breaking up your read sequence into substrings of length K, and these are called K-mers. So a K-mer is just a gene sequence of length K, which happens to be a subsequence of a read. One interesting property of these K-mers is that while some of them may align in the forward direction, about half of them will align in the reverse direction. And this is because DNA has a double helix structure. One of the issues with processing these large amounts of genetic data is that you spend a lot of time just waiting on reading in this data. A lot of alignment algorithms spend something like 70% of their time just stalled on memory accesses. This means that it's pretty important to be able to prefetch data to make these pipelines fast. Let's dive in by looking at a simple example of what a seek program looks like. You'll see that it has primitives for defining types that are kmers. So for example, kmer20 is a type that represents a kmer of length 20. You also see that we have a primitive to represent the reverse of a kmer. We have a keyword prefetch, which lets us prefetch data to make our pipeline processing faster. And very interestingly, we have this pipeline operator, which lets us express our sequencing pipelines as, well, 
a sequence of operations with data being piped from one operation to the next. Now let's look at some of the implementation details of this language. It was meant to be a drop-in replacement for Python, or at least for most of it. This means that we can program in Seek and get the expressiveness and productivity of programming in Python or a Python-like language, but get the performance of native code. To be able to do this, the authors have basically re-implemented Python from the ground up, but as a statically compiled language. They have a new compiler which takes seek code and compiles it to the LLVM intermediate representation. And once you do that, you can use the very mature and advanced LLVM compiler toolchain to optimize that and emit very fast native code. So the authors have essentially built a statically typed Python. They try to resolve all types at compile time and they disallow monkey patching at runtime. They are basically sacrificing some unnecessary dynamic features in order to get static compilation and great performance, which is a pretty good trade-off. When the seek compiler sees a function that, for example, could take both a float or an in, what it does is it generates two separate compiled versions of this function, one optimized for ints and another one for floats. To work with Python's duct typing, the compiler uses type inference. And the sort of things you give up when you go to static typing are things like having a list where the elements are of different types. I don't think that's a huge sacrifice to make. The really interesting part of this language is all the domain-specific constructs it has for bioinformatics. So for example, the seq type represents a DNA sequence. This type has general purpose string functionality, but also functionality specific to DNA sequences, like being able to extract k-mers and reverse complement k-mers. Another new construct is this pipeline operator because so many gene sequencing operations are naturally expressed as a sequence of operations performed as a pipeline. For example, reading a sequence from an input file, splitting it into k-mers, aligning them, and then writing those to an output file. The implementation doesn't accumulate data, so this is pure streaming. This means you can process terabytes of data while using very little memory. We also have pattern matching on strings, which makes it easy to express logic on particular patterns of DNA sequences. Remember that we only have four bases, so each element of a sequence needs only two bits to represent. This means that on 64-bit computers, you could express k-mers of up to length 32 in one word. And of course, we have plenty of benchmarks. What we see is that on all these bioinformatics benchmarks, Seek achieves a speed up of about 10x to as much as 160x. In fact, Seek is competitive even with highly optimized C++ code, which is pretty amazing considering that it's a very high-level Python-like language. And you can get even better performance because Seek code is easily parallelizable, and the prefetch keyword lets you efficiently prefetch data and run pipelines fast. So that was a look at Seek which is a Python-like language for the domain of bioinformatics. It lets you get the productivity of Python while getting the speed and parallelism of native languages. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.